Hey guys, just a quick update on the uh, reliable inverter situation. Uh, basically, uh, so there you go. There's one laying here and then there's one up there. So, uh, that one's the new one. Um, I reinstalled it, took the other one out. But before I put it up there yesterday, I um, decided that I was going to just connect it directly into the battery using this cable size here. Just so that nobody give me you know uh, crap about the wire size not big enough and stuff like that so I decided yesterday before I put it in I tested it with this I'm pretty sure this is like a one odd or even bigger but so I connected use this wire connected directly into my battery uh, terminal battery posts here right so I connect that up uh, plug in the uh, plug in the fridge and the freezer there so I only had the fridge plug in um, that was the only low and I plugged it in and crossed my finger and guess what it started up no problem it's uh, um, I saw the uh, AC output was about 122 yesterday and then when the fridge started up um, I can hear it um, the fridge compressor kicked on and as soon as that happened I saw the, the voltage drop down to about 119 which is fine which is you know normal um, so under that low, it started that fridge no problem and supposedly on paper or physically this is the same inverter uh, or they told me it's the same um, they didn't they didn't say that they changed anything all they told me is that they put it up they make a video of it um, testing it pulling 3500 watts but that wasn't the issue the issue the issue I was having is the search uh, capabilities or what not um, however so uh, it started that uh, fridge no problem uh, with that and then guess what just for the heck of it I went outside so I flipped on my um, my uh, breakers here um, after I reinstalls it um, I flipped on that breaker which turned the water heater uh, outside on um, so supposedly that pulls another 1100 to 1200 watts so I had that running which means there's already 1100 watts on the inverter then I plug in the fridge again then the fridge start with no problem see you see where I'm going with this so this inverter is definitely working like it should um, unlike this one this one can't even start the uh, the fridge by itself but this same one it start the fridge it start the fridge with um, the uh, heater uh, the water heater on uh, at the same time so just for the heck of it you know I start plugging in stuff like this freezer over here and well the old inverter the faulty one ran this freezer no problem so I had the water heater on this uh, freezer on and then the um, plug in that a uh, big refrigerator over there and everything turned on and run just fine and I've I've not had an, an arrow um, or a fault uh, on yet with this one um, I get a lot of fault arrow for overloading and stuff like that when you know I start running too much low on it but uh, with the new one it, it seemed to be good so um, the other thing is you know I might have to get an electric car. I was talking to my dad, trying to convince him to get an electric car. It's because look at it, it's noontime, right? And let's see, it's noontime, and my battery bank is at 64 uh, percent. I mean, not 64 percent, 64 volts, which is about 85 percent or so. So here is it, my little cheapy meter read 86 percent uh, at 63.9 volts. So that's the max that I these two inverter can handle. So that's the max that I can charge to. And the four panel that's on the side that's connected to midnight is not running or it doesn't need to run to uh, this midnight and resting right now because the battery is almost fully charged. Um, so this one, this inverter, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's pulsing at about 200 to 300 watts. And then, um, where is this one? So this one's pulsing about 
you know 400 500 watts so a total of we're currently using about 600 watts at the moment and obviously it's making you know plenty of power it's um, it's overproducing and it's not doing anything and please for the people that comment in I should have go with a grid tie you know whatever you don't you don't know the situation that I'm in so I don't I don't blame you for not understanding but there's no way that I'm gonna uh, put in a bunch of money for my solar system and then you know get in like two three cents uh, of extra power that I produce uh, and then my neighbor use it, but he's paying, you know, 13, 14 cent for it. And then the power company make a bunch of money uh, while they're still charging me a solar contract monthly fee. And then they also charge me up the, you know, up the a-hole for uh, overusing um, during the demand time. You know, if you, for some reason you don't have enough solar at the demand time and you, you use a bunch of power they're gonna they're gonna you know cut your throat at that moment or they try to bleed you out as much as possible during those moments so it's it's bull crap I rather I rather just plug in my heater and then heat you know just heat outside temperatures um, just for the hell of it instead of, of giving it to the the power company that that's all I'm saying so um, so let it be at that for the people that said that you know you're blah, blah blah you should go with a grid tie system so you can back fee and you can make money oh yeah you can yeah you can definitely make money yeah right um, anyway uh, that's just a quick update on the reliable inverter so now I'm just gonna send this one back to them and then I'll keep updating you guys see how this one goes um, obviously I understand that you know you get what you pay for uh, and it's definitely cheap uh, for what it's rated um, for the, the amount of power you get in uh, reliability wise like I said uh, two years ago when I first started it I had one of their brand and it was working fine just a couple of small issue here and there but you know you need to make sure you get in what you pay for though um, so what I'm trying to say is if you buy like this for say a 3500 watts inverter you know make sure that you actually when you first receive it make sure you plug everything in and pull the amount that it was rated for uh, either con continuous using the resistive low or the most important one I would say is is, is uh, uh, inductive low like motors and stuff like that or compressor uh, refrigerator and stuff like that make sure that it wor it's working for you make sure that it's really output and you know what it's rated for so like this one 3500 watts make sure it can start a 2200 watt search refrigerators uh, you know otherwise you know you may plug in you know something small like a resistive low and then thinking that it's working but then later on you plug in a fridge or something like that that's using a motor or compressor and then it doesn't work then you're really screw um, I think the only reason why they replaced it for me because I, I purchased this through eBay and it was still within the 30 days um, that's why they're you know they're a little bit uh, weary that I might you know uh, get eBay involved and stuff like that it could affect their rate and stuff that's why they replaced it for me but uh, if it's outside the warranty I don't think they will really care and uh, like I said so I proved the point uh, of the wiring issue um, some of you said that you know yeah my wire is too small blah 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 my DC inputs dropping all of those is you know like I said I already knew that wasn't the problem but uh, anyway like I said I tested with the big wires and then when I put it up here installed still leaving with the the wire that I had and it's working fine so I mean there's no issue with the wire like I said there was no voltage input uh, voltage wasn't dropping so that wasn't the issue and there's no way my 30 kilowatts lithium battery was dropping under 2200 watts low so um, well there you go uh, anyway thanks for watching um, I'll try to probably finish all of the wire in here and make a new uh, display panels and all that stuff and then I'll give you guys another update video thanks for watching